Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and this is another episode of Quick Sips. Today we're going to be taking a look at a sample that was sent in by an incredibly supportive viewer um, and someone I've gotten to know from this channel over the last weeks and months. Daniel, thank you so much for sending this in. It's an old Forester single barrel barrel proof store pick. Now this is something that in Ohio I believe is a lottery bottle, so I have like a 0% chance of ever getting one of these at retail, which leaves me with two options. I can either drive out of state, hunt, 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 and still possibly pay an upcharge, or I can go to the secondary market and pay around $150, $160 for one of these. And I'm I'm not gonna do you know either of those things. So getting a sample of this is the next best thing. So again, thank you so much, Daniel, for sending this in. Now, before we get started, I just need to say that Old Forester is not necessarily my cup of tea. It's not my favorite flavor profile of all time. Um, the 1910 has just too much of that banana note and that bright candied cherry thing going on for me to really like it. After a few sips, you know, that starts to go away and I can get more into the, the core of the bourbon and I can enjoy it a little bit more. But again, it's not my favorite. Moving on to the Old Forester Rye, I like it a little bit more for the high malt content. It starts to resemble a scotch in some ways, and, and that blends in with those brighter flavors a little bit better. Uh, finally, the, the 1920, which is everybody's favorite of the Whiskey Row series, and one of the best values in bourbon. This one is a little bit better for me. I, I think that it still retains some of the banana and candied cherry notes, but it's not as, as sweet or off-puttingly, you know, bright as some of these other offerings. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start by having just a quick little sip, quick sips, of the 1920, get acclimated to that, and then move immediately to the um, to the barrel-proof version of Old Forester here and see how that one can compare. Very quickly, the stats on this particular single barrel pick of Old Forester, um, we have 133.4 proof, uh, and that is 66.7% ABV. So this is a hot one. I mean, this is a high proof sample. I've seen these as low as the low 120s. This one is 133.4, so that's great. And it is from the eighth floor of Warehouse I. I have my picture of the label here in front of me. So we're on a high floor, high proof, not sure about the age, but who cares? These stats uh, sound pretty good to me. So let's get right into it. Have a quick sip here of the 1920 to get acclimated. Mm. All right, yeah, so the 1920 does just a great job of bringing in nice spice, really nice heat. Uh, drinks at, you know, 115 proof. Sometimes for me, this drinks a little bit over 115. It's a little hot, but it balances all of those sweeter characteristics with some of that heat and some of that spice. So I really like it. Yeah, and a little bit of that like um, sort of molasses, syrupy, brown sugar type characteristic in here. So awesome. Got that out of the way. Let's move right along now to this beautiful sample of this Old Forester barrel strength pick. First thing that I notice is just the color is deep, dark, rich. And the way that it sticks to the glass is incredible. It is very viscous, extremely oily. You can just tell that this thing is a high proof. So that's really, really exciting. Let's check it out on the nose here. Okay, so right away, it's a really dry nose. It's a dry, woody, spicy nose. Um, in terms of like the actual aromas here, it feels a little bit closed off and constricted, almost like if you dropped a, a little bit of water in there, it might open it up a little bit and become more inviting. But there's nothing on the top of this that's that's screaming fruit or screaming sweet, which for me is a good thing. You know, I don't I don't tend to like that banana or those bright cherry notes, and I'm not really getting them here on the nose. Now, with that said, it is it is a little lackluster. You know, it's it's kind of out of balance. It's really dry and really woody. It's it's I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. You have nice, rich caramels, a little bit sharp on on the on the caramel thing, and that's probably some of those baking spices mixing in there. So it, again, dry, sharp, but still you can smell that there's a nice, rich caramel base in here. Let's just take a sip and see where this goes. Whew. 
Oh my God, that is hot. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the things that I've heard about this particular line extension from Old Forester, that these single barrels are really, really hot. This one is no exception. At 133.4 proof, that thing definitely smacks you in the face. I mean, my mouth is on fire right now. It's like liquid gasoline. <laughs> but I've got to say, the actual flavors in here are pretty darn good. Um, like I said, that dry woodiness is still apparent on the palate. Tons and tons and tons of like pepper spice, chili spice. Really aggressive there. There is some fruit, but I'm going to need a second sip to kind of get into that because that one was so jarring. Yeah, this one actually, now on the top, you can smell some, um, like some apple pie type notes. Yeah, like pie crust notes in here too, you know? Again, that that's sort of going along with the, the baking spice, the caramel, the dry woodiness, all of that now after the first sip. It's resembling sort of a, a baked apple pie. All right, let's do another sip. Mm. There's some dark cherry, a little bit of dark fruit on that now. This is one of those, um, one of those pours that I talk about sometimes where you have to be careful about how you sip it, right? You don't want to take big sips of this and you don't want to rinse it around your palate too much. Um, you know, lower proof pours, uh, less viscous pours, you maybe chill filtered. You're going to want to take bigger sips, rinse it around quite a bit to kind of get, you know, get your palate acclimated, get the full effect and then swallow. This is one of those like it's touch and go, you know, it's like a hot stove. It's, you want to get on and get off because if you don't, it's going to just melt your face off. <laughs> um, so a lot of people don't talk about that so much. We tend to not talk too much about maybe glassware. We don't talk too much about actually how to sip these things. But this is one you need small, um, quick sips. Quick sips. That's the uh, third time I've probably said that on this video. All right, let's do the uh, the final sip here, and then I'll kind of wrap this up. The more I sip it, it does get a little bit sweeter. But I've got to say, this is so off profile for what I've come to know as Old Forester. The dryness, the the leather, the oak, the you know the heavy tannic quality of this, all of that spice, and honestly, a lack of sweet fruit. I mean, I said there's some baked apple pie in here. There are some dark fruits, but they're like dried out dark fruits. Nothing is like. Nothing is sweet and mouth-watering in the way that I know Old Forester to be. Um, you know, one thing I'll say is I actually took some of this sample and did a half and half with the 1910. And I know a lot of people like to combine the 1910 with the 1920 and make a 1915. That's a great blend, by the way. But I actually used the barrel strength with the 1910, and I liked it even more. So that's where some of this sample, maybe a third of the sample, uh, went, is I did that on a live stream, you know, some weeks ago. And I, I really enjoyed it. I think maybe some water, maybe a combination like that. But these picks on their own, I'll be curious to see how these develop. If they start picking maybe different barrels that aren't quite as hot. Or it could just be that Old Forester needs a little bit of dilution with water to, to make these things come to life. And to get the proper flavors out of that whiskey. I don't know what it has to do with, whether it's the barrels, whether it's the heat-cycled warehouses, whatever they're doing. But I've got to say, um, I like it because it's off profile for Old Forester. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, I would pass this bottle up and again, go to something like an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or particular batches of Booker's um, or even the 1920, which I think is just is just more balanced and better. So that is all I've got for this video. Um, not a negative review necessarily. It's just sort of middle of the road. And and I'm glad I had the opportunity to try this. Thank you again, Daniel, for sending me this sample. Um, thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a line in the comment section, or send me an email, drumsanddrams at gmail.com. If you have anything you'd like me to review or you know any feedback for the channel and the videos. But I think that's all I've got. 
I'm gonna go ahead and end this video with the last little bit of this old Forester sample. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Drums and Drams. Cheers.